Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today I wanted to do a video about things I wish I would have known before I started programming. And also, side note, it was brought to my attention that sometimes there is a very large glare on my glasses. I have not fully mastered the art of lighting and everything like that. Still working on it. But um, sometimes I need my glasses to see, so I'm sorry if it's a distraction. But I don't have any contacts at the moment because they're in a storage unit in uh, Florida. So I'm working with what I got. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, I wanted to talk about some things I wish I would have known before I started programming. and. I sort of feel like it's going to be a little bit of a funny video to reflect on things I wish I would have known and like what I know now. But also some things might help you out if you're just starting to program. It might help you get some of your expectations in the right place. So if you are interested at all, keep on watching. So first, it is nice to note that I started programming when I was in high school in the 10th grade. So my expectations of programming when I first started are going to be a little bit weird possibly <laughs> and a little bit different um basically why did i want to be a programmer well first and foremost i really loved computers and i was really interested in how they worked but the most important of all i wanted to be that computer hacker that you always see in action movies like in heists 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 that's a weird word I wanted to be that hacker that you see in action movies who are on the heist with a bunch of people and they're breaking through the mainframe and stuff like that. I thought that was the coolest thing ever and that's what I wanted to do. Then I learned that's not what programmers do, at least not all of them. So here are nine things that I wish I knew before I started programming. So number one is Knowing one language is great and it's a great stepping stone, but you're going to need to learn more than one language, resource, or you know, like framework or anything like that to create an actual application. When I was in high school through 10th grade and 11th grade, the only thing I learned was Java, mainly to get those, you know, fundamental skills down. But I figured during that time when it was the coolest thing ever that I could create a calculator and output to the console. thought it was so cool, showed my parents and everything. I thought all of my applications would just be in the console and you would just hit run and that's how you would run them. Obviously that is not really how things work and like I said learning one language is a great stepping stone but you're probably going to need other resources and different frameworks to help you build out an application that people can use or if you're not looking to create something to like put on a market even something um, that you're just looking for that people would use, you know? Like, typically, chances are you're gonna need to learn more than one language to create an application. Number two is it is going to take time to teach yourself to learn programming. I know that sounds kind of funky and weird, but you're gonna have to teach yourself to learn and think of things in a different light. So when I'm programming, the way that I think about things and look at things um, sometimes is different than I would look at them if it wasn't a programming problem. Now in daily life, all of my programming and everything runs in, runs together. It's just all one big mesh, so I think the same way all the time now. But if you're not used to that different style of thinking, um, it can be a little bit challenging. You're going to have to learn how to break things down into smaller pieces, figure out how to create solutions for those smaller pieces, and then put together the smaller pieces to create your one big puzzle piece. And like I said, if you've never thought that way before, it can be a little bit challenging to get yourself into it. But once you learn how to think that way, it's going to take over your whole life, just like me, and you're going to think programmatically forever. No, I'm just kidding. That's just me, because <laughs> I do nothing but program all day. But once you learn it and you get into the groove of it, learning different languages um, is going to become a lot easier for you. Number three, tutorials, whether it be classes at school, YouTube videos, Udemy, anything like that, Tutorials like that are only going to be about 50% of your learning. Some people might disagree, but this is just my opinion. I feel like it's only 50% of your learning because yes, it's giving you the foundational and the conceptual knowledge that you need, but until you work with it hands-on, 
get errors on your own, figure out how to fix them on your own, you're never really going to learn. So one thing that I have, am guilty of with a lot of people, when I'm learning something new, I open the tutorial, I watch it, and I'm not coding. I'm literally just watching it. Then I go and try to apply that knowledge to an application that I'm working on, or maybe even just like one of the example applications, and I completely blank and I don't know how to do it. And that's because I wasn't actually working with the tutorial. And when I get my own errors or errors that are a little bit different, research them, whether it be on like Stack Overflow or, you know, just mainly Google, <laughs> um, it helps me learn and it helps me to remember those different errors that I got, how I got them and how I resolved them better than if somebody's just telling me how to do something. I think for me, programming is one of those things where sometimes you have to learn hard lessons for yourself. Um, but the harder the lesson is, and the more I learn and overcome those challenges, the better it helps me remember what I learned, why I learned it, and how it can be integrated into whatever I'm doing. Number four sort of goes along with number three, and it is get out of tutorial purgatory. Stop watching tutorials on complete languages and just code. I am also guilty of watching tutorials of complete language overviews, how to use them, what variables are like in that language, and all the different features of the language without actually using them. So basically it's just like reading a textbook without applying the knowledge. If you are looking for something specific in how to apply it to your program, look for that one specific thing and then go apply it, figure it out, and then move on to the next thing. Don't just watch 40 hours of videos on how to use one language and then try to go do it in your application because it's not going to work. <laughs> and I've done that quite a few times and that was a hard lesson for me to learn and I'm still sort of getting over it and I'm getting better, you know? I'm never going to be perfect. but get out of tutorial purgatory and just go build something. Number five is in the beginning when you're learning how to program, dabble around with a few different things, see what you like, and then try to master it. For me, I didn't really have a choice of what programming language I learned in high school. I was just, it was just sort of Java. Like that's what we teach, that's what you're gonna learn, Java. So when I went to college, I was basically given the opportunity to dabble around in a few more things and sort of see what I liked and, you know, how I liked it in comparison to what I already knew. And um, like I've said in my like, welcome to my journey video, I found out that I really did like front end programming a little bit more than I liked back end programming. Um, having that been said, um, because my degree is in software engineering, I mainly focused on back-end technologies and now I know a little bit more how to get them to work together with front-end technologies, but my background is very strong in back-end um, and I, ha I don't have as much experience in front-end, but it's something that I like to do like on the side by myself. If I had the option, I think I would go through and completely master front-end and be a front-end developer just because I feel like I get to be more creative. but. I think it's great to know front end and back end. If you aren't looking for like web programming and you're looking to be a game developer, dabble in that a little bit and see what specific flavor of game development you like or AI or whatever it is. Dabble around a little bit and then try to come up with your specific skill sets Eh. your specific skill set that you want to learn, then try to become a master at that by doing different projects, doing different applications, and seeing how far you can test yourself and challenge yourself. I say that because you don't want to be a beginner in every single language. You want to be a master at your skill set. So, like I said, even though I am full stack, no front, back end, front end, back end, database, whatever, I really like front end, and that's, that's where my heart lies. So number six. I wish I could go back and tell myself, you're not going to just go get your bachelor's degree or master's degree. I do want my PhD, so I'm still going to work towards that. But basically, you're always going to be learning. Technology is, technology is always changing, and there's always a new framework, a new skill set. 
new something that's going to be coming out and of course you have to be flexible and change to not only job demands but also different technology demands for different industries um i can guarantee you the same skill set that you're using now might not might not necessarily be the same skill set that's used in 20 10 maybe even five years some frameworks come and go um so it's definitely a helpful thing to you know always be learning always be on the move looking for new things so number seven programming isn't for everyone and that's okay some people might disagree with me but again it's my own opinion I don't it's not that I don't think that everyone can be a programmer because I feel like with the right resources and with the right instruction anybody can program but I don't think it's for everyone. Just like cooking isn't for everyone, drawing and being an artist isn't for everyone, programming isn't for everyone. And I don't think you should try to fit yourself into a box that you don't fit in or that you don't wanna fit in. Every single bit of um, technology isn't for you know everybody who can program. Personally, I don't think that I am <laughs> meant to do networking. <laughs> I dabbled in it in college and I really just found out that it wasn't for me. Does it make me any less of a programmer? No. And it's okay that you don't, that you're not an expert at everything. So do what makes you happy in programming. Don't force yourself to learn things just because you feel like there's a certain expectation that you have to meet. Do what's good for you. And number eight sort of goes along with number seven, and it's don't let salaries determine what your stack is going to be. So somebody who is doing programming with intelligence, um, like artificial intelligence, AI, might have a higher salary in different places than a front end developer. Don't let the salary determine what you're going to learn because you're setting yourself up for failure. If you don't actually like all of the skills and the knowledge that's required to do a certain thing, don't force yourself to do it just because you see dollar signs. You're going to have a much more fulfilling and rewarding career by doing something that you enjoy doing than something that you force yourself to do just because you want it to be paid more. And that's the tea. Then number nine is going to be to be positive, be patient, and be passionate. And whatever you decide to do, do it for you, be passionate about it, be patient with yourself because there is a large learning curve on different programming languages and different skills. As long as you try it, you're working at it, I'm sure you're gonna get it. Not everybody learns at the same pace and not everybody learns the same way. So be patient with yourself, make sure that you're giving yourself breaks when you need to, don't bring yourself out, and just know that you got it, you can do it, and you're gonna be great at whatever you decide to do. So those were my nine things I wish I could have told myself before I started programming. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe if you're learning how to program or you want to learn how to program, I hope it A puts a smile on your face and B I hope it tells you not to take things too seriously. Do what you want. Do a little bit of research to see what you want and dabble a little bit if you don't know what you want to do. And it's okay to, you know, research around and move around until you get something that you like. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in my next